Hey guys, your friendly neighborhood John here. Just a fair warning, I had to pretty much cut out all of the copyrighted material in this video, which I know is like the whole fun of it. There's still some in there, but just the sheer amount of times that I had to upload this and it kept getting blocked worldwide. Hannah's been working hard on this and we have rendered this how many times now? At least four times. At least four or five times. Five. Yeah, so who knows how many more times we're gonna have to do this in order to actually be able to get it live on youtube.com, but that is why there are not long reaction clips. I am so sorry. What's up everyone, welcome back to ARTV. My name is John and I'm here with my dad, Keith, today. Thank you so much for joining me, Padre. I know that you're really excited about doing this video. Can you tell everyone how excited you are? Now what time am I gonna get to take a nap? You're excited for this though. You're, you're looking forward to this. I've been looking forward to this for the last, I don't know, four or five minutes. Today, I'm gonna be having you listen to some of the songs from my childhood that I was banned from listening to that were considered off limits from the CDs that I was no longer allowed to have and everything like that. These are the ones from like maybe like age 13 to 15 in that range between like 2005 to 2007. I've selected a good handful of tracks for you to listen to today. You're gonna go through and give your thoughts these were from the box of CDs that were taken, and I knew where you kept them, by the way. And they were under your bed. You remember that? You remember? No. Uh, you put them right under your bed, and I walked into your room to vacuum one day, and I saw those. When did you ever vacuum? I don't remember you ever vacuuming. I don't even remember uh, what the uh, music was about back then, so I'm... I'm Looking forward to seeing it, hearing what it's all about. Now, I will warn you that the first one is a little bit intense, but I put that one there for a reason. So buckle up, we're about to get in the roller coaster. All right, arms back, braced for impact. Now it's coming back to me, why I took those CDs. <laughs> That's pretty uh, intense, your word. Hey, you buckled up. Uh, she's saying, I'm so sick. Yes. I'm so sick of that song myself. It's pretty bad. The middle part is fine. This yeah. part is okay. Let's... You know, the vocals here. That's you okay. Like... So what did you think? I'm so sick. Okay. Yeah, you're, you're so sick, you're into it. You're, you're already sick. singing, look at you, you're already repeating the words back. That's crazy, you learned the lyrics that fast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the part where uh, they're screaming and yelling, like that uh, guy. Beartooth? Yeah, I don't care for that. He still remembers that. I think he still has nightmares about I when do. I showed I him still, Beartooth. I still have, wake up in a cold sweat. I still see your shadows in my room. So, how would you rate this song on a scale of thumbs up, thumbs down, or meh? You can give the signal, you can... Meh? Yeah. I thought for sure that was gonna get a thumbs down. No, because I imagine there's a lot worse coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> on this next song, I would appreciate if you paid close attention to it, just because this was a very important song for me. You know, like during my teenage years, you know, there were certain things that I dealt with. Um, but, obviously I got through that time, but music was a huge comfort to me, something that I turned to and really helped me. And it's still, to this day, my favorite song of all time. So this is Green Day Boulevard of Broken Dreams. I walk a lonely road, the only one that I have ever known. My shadow's the only one that walks beside me. That's a good song. It's got a good, good melody to it, and uh, yeah, I like that. You like it overall? Yeah. Sounded good so far? Okay. You gotta feel the music. Let it enter your heart and soul. Is it, has it entered? Yeah. <laughs> That's when the music moves you. I'm very moved. Yet you're somehow standing still. Yeah, I can relate to that. I didn't know that it was one of your favorite songs back then. Thumbs up. Thumbs up for that? Yeah. What specifically made you give it a thumbs up? Just lyrics, music? Lyrics, music, topic. Okay, so you, okay, you enjoyed it. And I, well, that's I nice it. to know. I was nervous to show you that one just because, you know, it's obviously one of my favorites. Here is a name that you've reacted to positively in the past. Oh. Now this is a big deal for you. Big deal, because you actually said that you liked it, 
You liked the rhythm, you told remember me. Remember that I can't remember what I had for lunch yesterday, so the, you're talking about three years ago. This is a band called Linkin Park. Does that ring a bell? Yeah, it does. Well, this is from their first album. I could not, I, I had a very hard time deciding which song to show you just because there's so many. They were one of the first bands that I was ever given on a mix CD. I landed on the track Crawling just because it is a rather haunting type song, and Chester Bennington uh, ended up taking his own life in 2017, it was really, really tragic. Have I heard that song before? You might have. Song? You've heard a different song from them before, but you've maybe heard me play that in passing. And if you couldn't hear what he was saying on the chorus, crawling in my skin, these wounds they will not heal, fear is how I fall, confusing what is real. I could listen to that. Really? I could listen to that. You don't mind the sound of that? Now, some of their stuff is heavier than yeah, this, of yeah. course. And a, a low volume. I could hear it on a low sure. volume. Sure. That's from their first album, Hybrid Theory. If you had to guess, how many copies do you think they sold of that record in the U.S.? I'm not sure worldwide, but how many do you think they sold? 10 million. Wow. On the nose. High five. Wow. Look at you. I don't normally like loud music or people screaming and that kind of thing, but this one uh, I like I like pretty good. It's got a good storyline to it or yeah, what it has to say. So right. uh, I'd give it a thumbs up. We're moving over to a female solo artist that in her early days was known for more of like a pop punk and maybe alternative pop type vibe. She blew up, hit it big. I'm not showing you her most popular song, but this was one of my favorites, especially back in the day. This song is called Losing Grip from her debut album, Let Go. Hey, I, I, so I like it. I like anything where they're not yelling at me. <laughs> that's, I don't think that's true. <laughs> Had you heard of Avril Lavigne at all before no. me telling you about her today? I don't think so. She was a pretty big artist. She's still well known and she still uh, charts some singles. She's got a new album coming out even this year. But this was 2002 when this came out initially. What did you think of the track overall? I liked it. I like it. I like when somebody has a good voice. Yeah. And you think she's got a good voice? Yeah, she's got a good voice. Yeah, she definitely does. What the songs lack that you've played so far are a really good melody. And like I, a like a catchiness? I grew up in a time where you could sing along with the songs. And and these don't really have that kind of a melody that you could sing along to. So in my mind, being 63 years old, is that every song so far pretty much has the same melody to me not nothing that stands out and this one uh doesn't have much of a melody but a good voice good musicians so i'd give it a thumbs up this next band is my chemical romance does the name ring a bell to say you? it again my chemical romance i thought you said mike and the robots mike and the robots is an that's their <laughs> alternate working title this is called famous last words and you will see why it has more of an inspirational tone. Yeah, I'm glad it has a more positive middle to the song. Right, well that's actually the chorus that we just heard there. It's called Famous Last Words because it's actually kind of heavily debated on whether or not the patient, who is the protagonist of the overall story of the Black Parade, actually dies at the end of the album or not. And people argue against the fact that he died because of the motivational tone of this song that is put almost right at the end of the album. It's not bad, but it doesn't, doesn't thrill me. Doesn't thrill you. What's, what's, what's the missing factor here? Is it the uh, over-the-top theatric vibe that you're getting from the song? Is it the vocals? Is it the inspirational tone? The vocals? He has no voice. But uh, the, ooh, the, the, ooh. Be the beginning was laughable. The, uh, this guy's a singer. See, here's the line right here. Here's you. Here's you, okay? And you just went whoop, and you landed over here somewhere on the other side of the line. Don't take it personally when I don't like some of the music you like. I don't think there's been very many parents that did like the music that their kids listen to. The only thing is, is that I just, I always, like, part of me wished that there was, like, more songs that we just, like, liked and could, like, jam out to, you know, and play. But 
I yeah. think most of our stuff that we do agree on is like older stuff. All right, now this next one, I think you might actually like. I'm really thinking you're gonna give a thumbs up to it. This was actually suggested by Hannah. So this might remind you well, of- That's putting a little pressure on me. You know, I don't wanna hurt Hannah's feelings. Now listen, you're gonna like this song. <laughs> you're gonna nod along, you're gonna tap your foot, you're gonna sing and dance, and you're gonna do all of the above, okay? Now try to close your eyes and picture a time when you were young, because that is the name of this song. Killers? Yeah, The Killers. Sam's Town is the name of the album. Killers. The Killers. I'm hearing a combination of Bob Dylan and Bruce Springsteen. I knew you were going to say Springsteen, and you're accurate. Springsteen. You're accurate. That was one of the number one inspirations for songs like this. Bruce Springsteen. They say the devil's water, it ain't so sweet. You don't have to drink right now. I think uh, Springsteen's got a slightly better voice, but uh, this band's better than Springsteen's band. Yeah. That you better than the E Street Band, you think? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's saying a lot. What do you think of this specific song? Because you praise the band and everything, they sound good. Obviously, that's based on hearing this song. But what specifically stood out to you? Were there any instruments in particular? Drums. The drums on yeah. this record, very, okay. Very good drummer. Okay, and uh, what did you think of like the guitar solos or anything like that? Anything else jumping out to you? Yeah, it was all very good. It just it did remind me of Springsteen. It's almost a, a copy of his... Uh, like 80s work, stuff that he was doing around that Born time. Born to Run. Yeah. How would you rate it? I'd rate it a thumbs up. Well, give it a thumbs up. You gotta show the people what they want. That's right. Dad approved. Only two songs left. This is Aerials by System of a Down. They're normally a heavier band than this, but I chose a lighter song for you. Uh, this is off of their 2001 album, Toxicity. System of a what? Down. So far, so good. Life is a waterfall. We drink from the river, then we turn around and put up our walls. They do a lot of harmonies in this band. Like you can hear the two vocalists kind of layering on top of each other there. Well, I'm conflicted. You're conflicted? Yeah, I like the parts. That are a little bit slower, more bass oriented. Slower and yeah. where he's singing. And I, once again, I don't care for the the loud guitars. I hate to give it a thumbs down or a meh because of, just because I have a bias or dislike of, of loud- uh, Louder guitars. <laughs> electric guitars, so I'll give it a thumbs up. Thumbs up on this one, raise it high. You gotta show the thumbs up. We don't hide the thumbs up around here. All right, this last band is an animated band. I don't want you to focus on that though, so I'm gonna put the screen away. I need you to just hear music only because they're an animated band. So. What, is, what do you mean an animated band? A cartoon? Right, like they're drawn. There's an animator, Jamie Hewlett, and then there's Damon Alburn who does the majority of vocals. They collaborate a lot, so there's guest vocals on this track. This was one of the biggest hits of the 2000s. It's a song called Feel Good Inc. Like Incorporated. I got it. <laughs> You've actually played this maybe before. Have I? Yeah. Feel like we're trying to shake out our cracks in their backs here. <laughs> it's got a good beat to it. Yeah, very rhythmic and a little funky. strange but I like it a lot really yeah you like this I like it a lot it was crazy it was kooky the guy laughing and everything yeah but you kind of like that kind of liked it and it had a, a a good beat to it what? what would you rate it how would you rate it's it? it's one of my favorite songs of all well, time I mean uh like, thumbs up thumbs down or oh a thumbs up a huge thumbs up well I got I'd give it two thumbs up you actually like that I that liked much it. though I liked it really and, you know I'm not a fan of rap but, no. But the sections that had a little bit of rap in it, I like. Wow, that, I feel like we've made some progress here. <laughs> Something just happened. Did We, we just, went one way. I did, don't know which way did we Did we went. just have a moment? Nah. 
explain now why it didn't really bother you that I took away your box of CDs because well, you... Well, it moment it definitely bothered me for a bit. I, this didn't happen overnight, but then I realized that I could go into your room while you were at work, take the CDs and burn copies of them and keep the copies for myself and then put the CDs back in the box and you'd never know the difference. How do you feel about those songs being banned back in the day? Do you think that the ban was something that uh, made sense and you're like, I hate most of these songs, so I'm glad? Or, eh, I don't really care one way or the other. You're not gonna think that uh, this explanation is gonna make sense at first. But I'm glad that I took the CDs, because if I hadn't taken the CDs, sometimes when you rebel and do something your parents don't want you to do, uh, something good comes from that. And you might have lost interest in music and wouldn't be doing what you're doing right now with ARTV. We'll never know for sure if that's true or not, but it, it may have had something to do with your continuing... Uh, even though your parents may have disapproved, you continued your love of music and wasn't the kind of music that we liked and uh, you might not be where you are today. Well, that is not what I expected at all, but thank you so much. That is exactly what I needed to hear. I'm glad we did it. I, we made it through all of the songs today. Let us know what you thought in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a like on the video, thank you, another thumbs up, maybe two thumbs up for gorillas, that is. Uh, if you want to see us do something like this in the future, let us know in the comment section down below. Other than that, that's all I got for you today. Subscribe and turn on notifications, and I'll see you soon for more right here on ARTV.